Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and well preparing for the examination. I am Gulapsa, your mentor and I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247 wherein we will be discussing about the financial stability report. But before that, there are two pieces of information for you guys. The first is that, as we have already informed, we have started with the live classes schedule. In case if you have not still yet checked the courses, you can go to our website and enroll for the same. For courses such as management and ESI, the classes will be starting from 15th of July. So you still have time, go and check out the courses. Apart from that, if you've still not downloaded our app, you can do so by going on to the Google Play Store. Any kind of exam related updates, live video sessions, monthly magazines, quizzes, topper strategies, as well as past year papers are available on this one stop app that is anujindal.in. So let's get started. So first and foremost question that comes to our mind is who prepares or releases this financial stability report? So the answer is RBI. RBI releases the financial stability report twice a year, that is bi-annually, once in the month of July and the other in the month of December. And this report is the 25th issue as of now. Now what does this financial stability report talks about? So this financial stability report talks about any kind of risk that is associated with the financial stability of a country and what type of resiliences can be provided to the financial system. Okay? Now, how is this report prepared? So, this report includes contribution from various financial sector regulators. So, there are certain financial sector regulators such as RBI, SEBI, then we have IRDAI, PFRDA, then we also have IBBI, Insolvency and Bankruptcy, Board of India. Then we have IFSCA. So these, these are the financial services uh, sector regulator. So they provide their contribution and based on their contribution, RBI comes out with the financial stability report. So what kind of risk is associated with the stability of the financial system of India? And as such, this report reflects the collective assessment of the subcommittee of the Financial Stability and Development Council. So what is this FSDC, Subcommittee of Financial Stability and Development Council? So this is a non-statutory apex council under the Ministry of Finance. Non-statutory because it has been formed by an executive order not by any law but by an executive order and it is being formed under the ministry of finance in the year 2010 and for the first time it's mentioned it was first mentioned in the raghuram rajan committee recommendations whereby they mentioned about the setting up of a financial stability and development council in order to strengthen and institutionalize the mechanism for maintaining financial stability in the country enhancing interregulatory coordination so between these regulator regulators as well as the regulation they wanted to have certain interregulatory coordination and at large promoting financial sector development so this was the aim this was the function of this committee of this council and that's the reason why this council was formed and this council is chaired by the finance minister of india so at present it will it must be chaired by nirmala sitaraman and the subcommittee of the financial stability and development council is headed by the governor of rbi so a one marker question can come from here who heads the financial stability and development council so the, then the answer to this will be the governor of RBI heads the subcommittee of FSDC. So I hope this is clear to you like what is this financial stability report all about. So it talks about the risk as well as the resiliences in the financial system. Now what are the major components? The entire report is classified into three major parts. First it talks about the macro financial risk. The risk that is of financial nature at the macro level then it talks about the financial institutions financial institutions such as our banks then we have nbfc's then we have 
म्यूचुअल फंड्स एंड अदर सच इंस्टीट्यूशन वॉट इज देयर साउंडनेस एज वेल एज देयर रेजिलियंसिस एंड थर्डली इट टॉक्स अबाउट द रेगुलेटरी इनिशिएटिव इन द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर सो वॉट ऑल रेगुलेटरी इनिशिएटिव आर बींग टेकन अप बाई आर बी आई से बी द इंश्योरेंस सेक्टर और द पेंशन सेक्टर सो ऑल ऑफ दीज इनिशिएटिव विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन द थर्ड मेजर पार्ट ऑफ दिस रिपोर्ट Apart from these three segments, the report also talks about a survey that is known as the systemic risk survey. Now, what is the systemic risk? As we all know, systemic risk means such kind of risk that affects the entire financial system, entire financial system of the country. It does not affect certain industry or certain company, but it affects the entire system, entire industry or the entire. financial system that's why it is known as systemic risk and such risk needs to be curtailed because if such risk happens then it is going to doom the entire financial sector that's why uh, it is very important and as we all know that for cases such as nbfc since it is so much inter regulated uh, inter regulated as well as it is uh, inter connected interconnected with so uh, with banks as well as with other organizations credit organizations as well as as well as mutual funds we say that nbfcs possess systemic risk and so we need to check from time to time whether any such systemic risk is uh, coming up or not okay so this report will also talk about the survey of systemic risk so moving forward so the first major component is the macro financial risk so we will be talking about the macro the financial risk at the macro level first at the global economy level and secondly at the domestic economy level now if we talk about the global economy level then due to the ongoing war in ukraine as well as the elevated commodity prices such as the crude prices as well as supply chains and darkening growth prospectives the global economic outlook has been negative has been negative for the financial sector negative as well as uncertain so it has been negative as well as uncertain apart from that the monetary policy normalization that has been done in response to the persistent high inflation as you must been reading in the news that inflation has been persistently high not only in india but in other countries as well and the operations the monetary policy operations that are being taken up by the central banks around the world has led has imparted more more of volatility in the market and thus it the global financial the global financial outlook has been uncertain theek hai secondly if we talk about the situation for the emerging markets the emerging market economies then their situation has been more challenging why because they are facing increasing risk of indebtedness uh, they are taking more of loans then because of currency depreciation you can connect this well with india our currency has been depreciating at a very faster pace then uh, capital outflows leading to volatility in the market and reserve losses our forex losses while supporting the rupee theek hai to in sab losses ke alawa there is a there is a concern that there might be situation of stagflation in the economy as well so all these features all this situation geopolitical situation as well as these emerging economics condi- economy condition have resulted in a negative and uncertain global economic outlook and this is possessing risk to the financial stability of the entire nation now moving on to the domestic economy part so despite the geopolitical tension that we all are facing because of the russia ukraine war and the elevated crude oil prices and the volatility that we are seeing well fpi exits from india but still we can say that the indicators the domestic indicators show a gradual however an uneven strengthening recovery for india theek hai india ke liye gradual however uneven strengthening recovery hai and we can also and how can we say this this is based on certain parameters certain 
positive indicators such as the corporate sales which has been increasing then profitability of companies has also been increasing as well as the bank credit and the credit creation in the economy has increased as well as picked up steadily apart from that the nbfcs as i've already mentioned they possess systemic risks to the financial system they are also showing that they have remained more capitalized more strengthened so all of these indicators feels all of these indicators indicates that our domestic economic outlook has been increasing has been growing but at a gradual as well as at an uneven rate so moving forward to the second important category that is the financial institutions how are they performing their soundness and the resilience so first of all we'll talking we will be talking about the scheduled commercial banks as 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 during this 6 month period during which the report was prepared we have seen that the scheduled commercial banks have maintained robust capital positions with the capital to risk weighted assets ratio so the capital adequacy ratio or the uh, capital to risk weighted assets ratio has been 16.7% for the scheduled commercial banks now if you are aware of the basel norms of the basel 3 norms of the basel 3 norms and according to the basel 3 norms scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain 8% as capital adequacy ratio however rbi mandates indians to maintain at 9% so a rate of 16.7% which is almost double is very good for the economy however there is a flip to this point as well how you can think like this that okay they have they are having more of more of a uh, capital to protect in in the case of adverse सर्कमस्टांसिस राइट कि आपके पास ज़्यादा बफर्स हैं ज़्यादा कैपिटल स्टॉक है जिससे आप रीपेमेंट कर सकते हो बट दैट ऑल्सो मीन्स दैट यू आर नॉट यूटिलाइजिंग योर मनी यू आर कीपिंग द एंटायर मनी एज बफर यू आर नॉट यूटिलाइजिंग दैट मनी टू प्रोवाइड लोन एंड देन अर्न ऑन दैट मनी एंड वाइल अर्निंग यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग ओवरऑल इंक्रीज इन द इनकम और ओवरऑल इंक्रीज इन द सप्लाई ऑफ द मनी इन द इकोनॉमी ठीक है तो ये एक फ्लिप साइड हो जाता है इफ़ यू हैव मोर ऑफ बफर्स इफ़ यू हैव मोर ऑफ रिजर्व्स देन यू आर यू आर एक्चुअली अंडर यूटिलाइजिंग द मनी सो इसको ध्यान में रखना इट कैन बी अ प्लस एज वेल एज अ नेगेटिव पॉइंट एंड वन रीजन व्हाई वी कैन सी दैट द बैंक्स हैव kept a cushion the buffer to 16.7% is because of the ongoing prevailing situation situation is very volatile they do not want to have they do not want to mess up with the money that's the reason why they are keeping this uh, more and more of their money as stocks theek hai second we will be talking about uh, the common equity tier 1 capital which is 16.7 16 13.6% person, 13.6% this is also a very good number uh, according to the basel norms it is 4.5% and we are maintaining 13.6% that means we have more of capital to provide for any adverse financial situation so if in case any adverse financial situation happens then the banks are well equipped to provide for the resolution and in such a case the bank will not go bank run first thing and second thing the bank can uh, the bank can continue its business without getting liquidated theek hai if we talk about the non performing assets then we can see that there has been a decline our gross non performing assets was 5.9% and our net uh, non performing assets has been 1.7% in march 2022 which is a good number now we'll talk about uh, another feature another ratio that talks about provisioning coverage ratio so we can see that our provisioning coverage ratio has increased earlier it was around 67% but now it has increased to 70.9% now what does this increase or decrease means और क्या इंक्रीज अच्छा होता है या बुरा होता है वी विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस बिफोर आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट प्रोविजनिंग कवरेज रेशियो टॉक्स अबाउट सो द प्रोविजनिंग कवरेज रेशियो टॉक्स अबाउट द परसेंटेज ऑफ बैड एसेट्स द परसेंटेज ऑफ बैड एसेट्स दैट द बैंक हैज टू दैट द बैंक हैज टू प्रोवाइड फॉर फ्रॉम देयर ओन फंड सपोज एन है 
एन पी हमारे बैड एसेट्स होते हैं सो वॉट परसेंटेज ऑफ दिस एन पी ए विल द बैंक प्रोवाइड टू द कस्टमर्स इन केस ऑफ एनी एनी काइंड ऑफ एन पी और एनी काइंड ऑफ लॉसेज सो द बैंक विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग अराउंड सेवेंटी परसेंट अगर आपके सेवेंटी हंड्रेड रुपीज़ हैं तो बैंक विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग अराउंड सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ योर मनी बैक इन केस ऑफ एनी बैड एसेट्स हैपनिंग सो वी कैन से दैट एनी इंक्रीज इन द प्रोविजनिंग कवरेज रेशियो इज गुड फॉर द इज गुड फॉर द डिपॉजिटर्स राइट सो एनी इन द हायर द कवरेज रेशियो द ईजियर इट इज फॉर द बैंक टू मेक इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट्स ऑन द डेट्स विच आर गिवन बाई द डिपॉजिटर्स एज एज वेल एज टू पे डिविडेंस टू द शेयर होल्डर्स सो दिस वॉज द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन साउंडनेस एंड रेजिलियंसिस ठीक है नाउ विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सर्टन एनालिसिस विच इज डन इन द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो द फर्स्ट वन इज द मैक्रो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट फॉर क्रेडिट रिस्क सो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट इज बेसिकली अ काइंड ऑफ a kind of linking a kind of quantifying the link between the macroeconomic variables and the health and the health of the financial institution theek hai to macro matlab macro level pe jo macro indicators honge usko aap test kar rahe ho financial indicators ke sath theek hai and what indicators are you taking into consideration you are taking into consideration credit risk so the macro level stress test for credit risk reveals that the scheduled commercial banks are well capitalized how are they well capitalized we have seen the ratio of the capital adequacy ratio as well as the common tier ratio they have they have maintained more than required and all banks and as such all banks would be able to comply with the minimum capital requirements as per basel 3 or rbi's guidelines even under adverse stress scenarios so stress scenarios may be banks ko worry karne ki zarurat nahi hai because they have sufficient amount of reserves now we will be talking about the network analysis now what does this network analysis talks about so this network analysis indicates the total outstanding bilateral exposures between the constituents of the financial system suppose banks hai bank 1 and bank 2 so what is their bilateral exposure uske bare mein discuss kiya jata hai and if we talk about it then the share of scheduled commercial banks in the bilateral exposure now this exposure can be within banks within nbfcs or within bank and nbfc within insurance sector within pension sector any sector of the financial uh, segment theek hai उसके बीच में जो एक्सपोजर होता है उसको दिखाता है ये नेटवर्क एनालिसिस एंड फॉर द स्केड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक्स द शेयर हैज बीन इंक्रीजिंग इट इज द लार्जेस्ट सो द हाईएस्ट कंट्रीब्यूशन और द एक्सपोजर इन केस ऑफ बायोलैटरल एक्सपोजर इज ऑफ स्केड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक्स एंड थर्डली वी हैव द सिमुलेटेड कंटेजन एनालिसिस वॉट इज दिस एस सी ए कंटेजन एनालिसिस सो बेसिकली इट शोज दैट इवन दो there were losses uh, due to failure of banks in the past right with the maximum capacity however there was no contagion effect no contagion effect that would lead to the failure of any other additional banks usually ye dekha gaya hai jab bhi bahut sare banks fail hona start karte hain if we talk about the financial crisis of 2008 then you have you must have seen that ek ke baad ek banks fail hote ja rahe the but in case of india we have seen that those five banks failed uh, five large banks failed though however the contagion of this failing of the banks were not seen and as such they we can say that there will be no additional failure of banks in the future theek hai and the third major category is the regulatory initiatives and other developments in the financial sector so uh, one information for you guys so there is an annexure to this document that was provided by rbi the financial stability report and there is an annexure called annexure 3 theek hai तो इस एन एक्जर थ्री को आप लोग डाउनलोड करोगे एंड देन यू विल गो थ्रू इट सो व्हाट दिस एन एक्जर थ्री इज ऑल अबाउट लेट मी टेल यू सो दिस एन एक्जर थ्री टॉक्स अबाउट ऑल द रेगुलेटरी इनिशिएटिव्स दैट हैज बीन टेकन बाय द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड देयर आर सिक्स 
फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर्स आर बी आई से बी पी एफ आर डी ए तो जितने भी फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर्स हैं उन्होंने कुछ कुछ इनिशियटिव लिया था इन ऑर्डर टू हैव मोर ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी इन द इकोनॉमी ठीक है इट विल एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज इनिशियटिव हैज़ ऑलरेडी बिन डिस्कस्ड विद यू इन द पास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स इधर बाई मी और बाई तनवी मैम However, एक जगह पे they've also provided with the rationale. What was the rationale behind introducing such regulatory initiatives, and what all regulatory initiatives has been introduced in the past six months with dates in a chronological manner? So, is an exit three ko aap download karoge financial stability report ki last mein hai bilkul, and you will go through this. It is a very helpful document, and this will and I can say that you can uh, surely, surely. expect a question out of there theek hai now talking about the initiatives and other developments in the financial sector taken by the regulators so the regulators across the globe first we'll talk about the globe and then in the domestic economy that is india so the regulators across the globe have focused their attention on reprioritizing the regulatory initiatives and the main priority for any regulator is for the nbfcs you you must have also seen that rbi has also come up with certain regulation for nbfcs unko categorize kiya gaya hai pehle to uske alawa they have come with certain other regulation ki har category ko aap kaise regulate karoge right so this regulation is important so that any kind of any kind of contagion or any kind of systemic risk does not occur in the economy in the financial sector and the report also says that post pandemic we have improved a lot but we need to strengthen the regulation of the nbfcs in the first priority theek hai and the the report also talks about the developments in the crypto ecosystem and the broader use of technology in the financial services so that by using these uh, technologies and new technologies we can have more of convenience for the customers and more of stability in the financial system and if we talk about domestically there were efforts to continue to fortify the financial system against the sudden shocks and to improve the credit environment so domestically you must have seen that uh the government the rbi or the government has come up with the 75 digital banking units in order to provide the customers with the convenience then we also had le legal entity identifier a question was there in phase 2 of rbi grade b exam as well so it is basically a unique digit that has been provided to the customers so that any type of trans all type of transactions can happen through this digit only so there are several other features and all of these has been provided at one place in nx03 so please go and download this nx03 and go through it theek hai so ye sare cheezon ke bare mein discuss kiya gaya tha is report ke andar and lastly we will talk about the systemic risk survey srs theek hai so what was this systemic risk survey so ye jo survey hai it categorizes the risk into five groups and based on the last survey and present survey we can see that uh there has been an increase and we have moved to high segment high risk category in the case of global risk and you know the reasons why what could be the reasons the reasons are obvious the geopolitical tensions the ongoing russian russia war the the disruptions in the supply chains etc and we have we can also see a risk category a high risk category in the financial market risk why financial market risk again this is very clear you need to analyze ki reasons kya hain ki inme increase ki hua pehle medium se high kaise gaya so the obvious reasons iska maine bata diya uncertainties tha वॉर चल रहे हैं क्रूड ऑयल प्राइसिस इंक्रीज हो रहे हैं राइट एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट रिस्क दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीजिंग इन्फ्लेशनरी प्रेशर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीजिंग इन्फ्लेशनरी प्रेशर देर हैज बीन सेवरल मेजर्स विच आर बींग टेकन अप बाई द सेंट्रल बैंक सच एज सच एज डिक्रीजिंग लिक्विडिटी इन द मार्केट सो ऑल ऑफ दीज आर प्रोजेजिंग रिस्क एंड दिस हैज रिजल्टड in a high category risk for global as well as financial market risk 
and if uh, the other is the macroeconomic institution and general risk shows that they are in the medium range medium risk category theek hai and one more thing uh, according to this report nearly 80% of the responded responding to this survey judge that the prospects of the indian banking sector are likely to improve either improve theek hai और रिमेन अनचेंज ओवर दी वन ईयर होराइजन तो ये जो वन ईयर का पीरियड है द वोलाटाइल वन ईयर पीरियड पीपल फील अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस सर्वे दैट द इंडियन प्रोस्पेक्ट्स कैन ईदर इंक्रीज कैन ईदर इम्प्रूव और इट विल स्टे इन द सेम पोजिशन सो दिस वॉज ऑल फॉर टू डे अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दिस एंड गो थ्रू दिस दिस टॉक्स अबाउट the reasons behind the risk to financial stability what all are the risks humne ye dekh liya ki major risk to hamare global or financial market risk hi hai right global and financial market risk and the reasons are very much obvious to you these are the reasons why this risk has been increasing over the years theek hai if if i talk about one or two first is the monetary policy tightening obvious because of the financial market risk increasing the interest rates in order to decrease the liquidity in order to curtail inflationary pressure second volatility in the capital flows then we have the de-anchoring of inflation expectations and the faltering of the economic re- economic review the governors the central banks around the world said that there will be a recovery of the economy however it did not happen so all of these have posed posed to an increase in this financial stability risk plus deglobalization people are closing the economy for example china closed its economy for a certain period of time when there were uh, news about uh, covid cases theek hai and the last one is the climate change risk so this was all about the financial stability report i hope ab aapko fair understanding hoga ki financial stability report hota kya hai so let me just brief for you first ye ट्वाइस ईयर रिलीज होती है इट टॉक्स अबाउट फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी कैसे हम स्टेबिलिटी ला सकें फाइनेंशियल सेगमेंट में बाई इम बाई करटेलिंग द रिस्क सो यूल टॉक अबाउट द रिस्क एज वेल एज द रेजिलियंसिस ठीक है और इट ऑल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बाई द अदर फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर्स एंड दे आर थ्री मेजर कैटेगरीज जिसके अंदर वो चीज़ों को डिस्कस करते हैं मैक्रो लेवल पे फाइनेंशियल रिस्क क्या है then how are the financial institutions performing how much how strong and resilient are these financial institutions and how what are the regulatory measures which has been taken by the financial sector regulators to provide for financial stability so this is all about financial stability report we'll be coming up with another important session on another report and till then take care and In case of any query you can write it down in the comment section. Okay bye bye.